Alright, so stupid questions. Sure. Um, so what do you feel was your biggest accomplishment in 2017? Accomplishment in 2017? I, I don't really think that there was there's personal um, accomplishments that you can rack up. You know, I, I mean, there's nothing that I as an individual all by myself without the help of lots of other people did, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it, that is the way it is with, um, with MLAs. You're part of a team, uh, a government team. And 2017 was a really strange year because it was an election year. So a lot of the what I would call normal business really did not hit you know, mm -hmm. to, to be done. Um, the, right at the end of 2017, the most important thing that I'm working on, was working on then and then working on, on now, is the ch stop the time change. Yeah. So to me, that's a, a significant piece of legislation okay. and um, I'm going to follow that through. Nice. Um, so how do you feel that NDP government is doing so far? They've fulfilled some of their promises. Um, the more expensive ones are still out there. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, so far they haven't ruffled enough feathers, I think, to cause major disruptions in the way people thought or felt. Uh, I think a lot of people are uncomfortable with the alliance of the Green Party and the NDP. Um, I think they initially when they voted Green or NDP, they were not thinking of them as together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's been something that um, a lot of people are scratching their heads about. Mm -hmm. They have different, um, certainly different background policies, etc. Uh, so yeah, that, I mean, so far it's pretty hard to say other than the fact that, you know, I'm, we have a budget and a throne speech <laughs> coming up uh, in February and um, it will be very interesting to see what they put into that budget and how they're going to fund it. Uh, what do you think will be the undoing of the NDP government? Um, I think that initially you, you won't see a lot of negativity. Um, it will happen as we progress and as the impact to the taxpayers uh, income tax and bottom line starts to be felt. Um, almost anything that you promise to do has a, uh, a cost and um, there, while there was a lot of money left for them to use, uh, they've spent it, uh, which means that going forward, any way, anything they put on the table now has got to have a way to fund it. And the only f funder in the province of British Columbia is the taxpayer. Um, what do you like about working with the NDP government? Um, I don't really like anything about working with them. You know, that's not my job to like them. Um, and, uh, and so far, um, because they've been disorganized, I'll use the word disorganized, um, for us as uh, working out in the field uh, to go through into a ministry to find uh, answers to questions has been difficult. And mainly because of the huge staffing turnover, um, massive staffing turnover, as you know, in Victoria, uh, and also they haven't filled all of those uh, positions and therefore they're understaffed in lots of categories and so when we try to get answers for things it's a bit of a struggle. Um, are you planning on introducing any new bills or legislation? Just the one I have on the table right now uh, and I will have to reintroduce it. So what happens is with all bills, private member bills that are on, um, on the floor, uh, when Parliament is disbanded uh, then they all fall off and then we have to start all over again. So I will reintroduce it in February. Um, and why do you think that voters turned against the Liberals in other parts of the province? I don't think they did turn against them. To be perfectly honest, I don't think there was a turning against. Uh, I think there was a, certainly a movement for some change, um, but the Liberal Party was quite capable of making those changes as well. So uh, I think overall it was just that undercurrent of, um, yeah, it's really hard to describe. I know that if you take a look at the province, all right, as a whole, um, other than that pocket in the Lower Mainland, the Liberal vote was pretty strong and stable everywhere. But that population in Surrey and the Lower Mainland actually has, and I hate to even say this, control 
of uh, what happens in the province in lots of ways. The population there outnumbers the rest of us. And we obviously did not um, deal with their issues in that particular pocket of population. So how are the, liberal, the Liberals responding to the change? Um, well, right now we are in the middle of, you, as you know, of a leadership race. So until the new leader is uh, elected and comes to the table and puts their ideas and their policies on the table, we're kind of in limbo. So we've, all, we've held back on that. We, we as a caucus haven't been developing policies. We really feel strongly that whoever the new leader is, that's their, you know, their number one thing is to sit down with caucus and take a look at policies and, um, and, and redevelop ones um, underneath how they feel. Uh, what issues did you see your constituents most concerned about last year? Well, last year the flooding. For us it was flooding. Uh, for other parts of the province, obviously fire, right? But for here, flood, um, we are still dealing with that. There's actually, the water table is still higher now than it would normally be when you get to winter. Um, and I'm concerned as well, we, some of the flooding we had related to areas that had been burned out by fire. So when fire takes out all the undergrowth and all the bushes, there's nothing to stop the water from running down the hills, which is what happened again out at Testalinda and out that way, um, because the fire burned all along that mountain behind Fairview Golf Course and, and all along there. Um, so flooding ad, again will be an issue this spring. We are already over snowpack. So I think that that's going to um, happen again. Um, and then out of that type of big thing like that, I'm still concerned about the funding for the canal. Um, we have the provincial money, they have reaffirmed that it's there. Um, we're waiting for the feds and they are incredibly slow. And so, you know, it's, a, it's now on their table waiting for them to come back and match the money. And we've sent letters, and I know the minister has sent letters, and I know the towns, everybody. But um, we, we really don't have control of what the federal government does. Um, what issues do you see people being most concerned about this year? Um, going forward, you know, I, we don't get, we haven't had um, a lot of what I would call major issues um, on the table. Uh, and, and going forward this year, I think again, it's the wait and see kind of thing. Um, I don't think people's taxes will be affected this first year. Um, this will be the first full year of the NDP government starting in the spring and running right through fall. Um, but I think that um, going forward, there's some concern there. There's concern, certainly should be concern from business uh, with minimum wage. Uh, that's something that, while it's great, and, and you know, I think everybody should have a living wage, if you move the bottom up 20%, you have to move all of the steps up, all the way through, because the people at the top are going to say, uh, just a minute here, you know, um, where's my increase? And then what happens is it just keeps rolling, and then all of a sudden the cost of goods goes up, and the price of everything goes up, and people don't realize that. You, all you have to do is move one small thing in that chain of consumers, and you affect everything. So that's a worry. Uh, I know it's a worry for small business. Uh, already back east in, in Ontario, because they've just done this, uh, there's already lots of things happening, you know, in the small business community. Um, so yeah, that does concern me. We're all small communities and a lot of them just have two or three employees or whatever. And if uh, the cost of keeping your business open becomes something you can't handle, um, that is a concern. Mm -hmm. um, are you concerned about the upcoming marijuana legalization this year? Yeah, I'm not a fan of marijuana. I never was. I've never supported that at all. I think it's got some very strong medical uses. Mm -hmm. and, and I know people who have used it from a medical perspective. And I know that they're doing all kinds of research now on everything from Parkinson's and anything else where there is some um, uh, uh, possibility that marijuana would be something that would make somebody's life better. I've seen it, uh, different things with different uh, children and so on. Um, I, I don't know, I am not a fond of it as a recreational thing at all. Um, I, to be perfectly honest, I've never tried it in my life and I've never been a smoker, so I, you know, it's, it's, 
I don't know that they're that connected, but there could be a connection there. Um, but I really, um, I'm not, no, I don't believe in any kind of drug. And I, th I think that marijuana is a drug. Mm -hmm. uh, what impacts do you see coming with legalization? Then? Well, mostly it's up to the, it ends up on the shoulders of the municipalities, unfortunately. Um, the province and then the municipalities. So every municipality will have to do zoning or whatever is appropriate in their area. They'll have to deal with people coming forward, wanting to start up um, operations or whatever. I mean, I know of some right now that already exist in my riding and have been for a while and are connected medically to a medical facility and deal strictly with it for that purpose and it's a good, there's good paying jobs, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's something that each, each town and community is gonna have to have a, a big discussion about. Mm -hmm. um, so I know previously you were working on um, improvements at the hospital here. Yes. Do you have any updates? Well, I mean, I'm thrilled to see that they have put the revamp of the ER um, as uh, an item for this coming year for budgeting and I assume the regional district uh, hospital um, uh, board will also um, support that. That was one of the main things that the um, doctors were concerned about was the environment, the um, emergency environment and they have been trying for years to, to have that fixed so I'm very pleased to see that that finally moved to the top of the, of the list. Um, as far as the doctor's salaries and looking at a new way to pay them, that's still out there. The last conversation I had with um, Minister Dix uh, said it was, he said it was proving to be a little bit more complicated than he had first thought, um, but I know that they are working on it. And I'll keep my fingers crossed that that one pans out in a way that makes our um, emergency doctors happy. Um, how do you feel about the new hotel coming to Centennial Park? Well, I have a long history uh, in this community of trying, <laughs> of trying to get a hotel here way back into the late 90s. Um, I, I, I guess it's one of those things, it's a coming of age, right? It's finally, maybe this was the right time and the right place and everything. I think it's good. I think it's good for the community. It's a good employer. Um, we are the wine capital of Canada, and this is the first hotel that we've actually had, a legitimate, real hotel, um, and uh, it's time. You know, so I hope people will embrace it as a new business. I think it will be a huge benefit to the businesses on the main street because everything's within walking distance for people. And so it should be a boost for our local restaurants and, and shops. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I think it's, I, I'm really pleased to see that it has finally come to the point where it's being built. Um, what are you looking forward to most this year? Hmm. You know, I'm I'm like most of my uh, my party, I guess, I'm and my caucus. I'm I'm really not knowing what's coming um, and waiting to see what's going to come in the throne speech and the budget in order to get a take on what you might want to stand up and fight for or against, right? As you move forward, uh, and I really don't have a um, um, anything. You know, I think everybody was exhausted after last year, <laughs> you know, so um, everyone's just kind of, whew, okay, where do we go from here? You know, but this is, we're starting all over again. Uh, and it's literally starting all over again because the last six or eight months have been really um, strange, but, you know, very up and down, very, um, very different in the legislature in Victoria. But, um, you know, I'm looking forward to just representing the people of this riding the best that I possibly can given the fact that I don't have direct access anymore to the ministers. Okay, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, it takes a little longer. People will just have to be patient, you know. But at this point, the, they're not as so organized that even their own writings are getting speedy answers to things, you know. So I'm hoping that from an administrative, clerical, uh, you know, that type of uh, situation that it will get better. Uh, and I, I have no problem walking up to any minister and asking for something for this writing. Mm -hmm. Put down. Oh, you missed the one that's really important that we fought for four years on, Fortis and the two-tier system. Go ahead. Okay, yes. This office has been an intervener in, in, in the uh, Fortis two-tier thing and other issues that, that Fortis has been working on for the, over the last years. 
finally we are going to have the two-tier system out. But I am very disappointed that it's five years to take it out because it didn't take five years to put it in. But I'm very glad that all of those letters that we had people write, everything that came through our office and all of the stuff we sent to the BCUC and to Fortis has finally paid off. So that's kind of a, that's, there you go, there's an accomplishment. Whether, I'm not going to claim it per se, but I'm going to say that we certainly put enough literature in to raise the, the uh, interest to the top of the pile.